What's up guys, this is OSG and today I'm going to be talking to you about tyre uh, compound upgrades in Forza. So what a lot of people think is that as you move through the tyre compounds up to slick, each tyre compound is better than the previous one, which is completely isn't true. And that these tyres all are for a very respected category, which also isn't true. They can be used for road racing, they can be used for rally racing, they can be used for b basically any kind of racing. So, if I if I go through all the tyres with you, so we've got stock, street, sport, semi-slick, and slick, uh, which these two are race tyres. And then we've got drift, uh, rally, off-road. These they call these off-road, but they're actually rally tyres. Snow and drag. So what a lot of people don't understand is that. These tyres are just for roads. These these are just road tyres. What a lot of people don't understand is that these tyres here can be used for road. Now, the um, the drag tyres offer a pretty good intermediary between street and stock. And then between street and sport, you can use the off-road tyres as an intermediary. And then between sport and uh, semi-slick, you can use the rally tyres as an intermediary and then, and then this one here, the fully slick tyres are only useful when uh, it's very dry so that, uh, they're never really useful for competitive racing one, because you don't know when it's going to be wet and two, because they're very pure expensive for not that much of an increase in grip um, now also the snow tyres are generally very useful in the winter, but in Forza Horizon 4, but in Forza Horizon 5 they're not that useful, seeing as not very much of the map has snow on it at all. They can be used from places like the ice rink though, but that's going to be gone soon. Um, drift tyres, I'd say only use them for drift, but I mean, they are they are sort of meant to have more grip than the uh, sport tyres, so I guess you could use it as a little way of getting a better tyre compound than sport, but they actually take a um, bit, lot more PI for just point one more grips. It's not that useful. Anyway, another thing people think is that these these tyres are the best for rally and these are the best for cross country. These are obviously the best for cross country, but they're not necessary if your car doesn't have that much power. They cost a lot of PI over the normal tyres, so you may not want to use them. And that these are the best for rally. One, don't use these if it's too PI expensive, and two. They're not always the best, because most Forza Horizon Rally is completely dirt. There's not that much tarmac at all. And these are conclusively better on dirt. These are only better on tarmac. Um, so often, these PI cheaper tyres, which also work better on dirt, can give you a big advantage in the Horizon Rally dirt racing, just because they're better on dirt and they, they don't cost so much PIs, you can have more power. So anyway, that's that's basically what I'm going to go over in terms of which tyre compound is best for what. Obviously, drag is best best for drag and drift is best for drift. But you don't really have to worry about PI and drift because mm, there's not really competitive PI-based drifting. Drifting is just done whatever car you want and it's not really leaderboarded or ranked in any way. Anyway, moving on, I'm going to show you how heat affects your tyres. So I'm on stock tyres right now, as you can see here. So if I go out of here and start driving, I'm going to show you the tuning window, which I've gone over in a previous video, and what the tyres, like what the tyre temperature is. So if I go to the tuning window now, we can see how hot the tyres are. So because they're blue right now, that means they're not hot enough. So I'm just going to heat them up a little bit by doing some like burnouts and stuff. So if you look, they've gone yellow and red, that means they're overheating slightly. But they quickly settle back down to blue and clear. If you look, as soon as I start driving straight and not spinning the tyres anymore, as uh, would be happening in a real race, you're not going to do that much um, tyre spinning in a real race, they they settle back down to clear. So the front tyres are even a bit too cold, and the back tyres, as I start to speed up, are completely clear. So even if I'm steering a little bit, they're not heating up too much. And the thing is, right now, is that if you decided to upgrade the tyre compound, you wouldn't really get, be getting much of an advantage because if you can't heat the stock tyres up enough, you're very unlikely to be able to heat the sport and race tyres up enough for them to actually be useful. So basically, what you're basing your tyre compound upgrade off is, are my tyres overheating at stock? I'll upgrade and then you keep upgrading until your tyre compound is generally staying in a good temperature 
Now, supercars are going to heat their tyres up no matter what. You're going to be in the yellows a lot of the time. So you generally just want to go for the best tyre compound, but don't go for slick if you're competitive racing because of the fact that it's it's quite unpredictable whether you could have a wet track. And if you have a wet track on slicks, your car is very unpredictable. Also, if you dip off-road a little bit like that on slicks, it's going to be very hard to drive because you lose the grip immediately. As slick tyres have no grip off-road, whereas semi-slicks do have an all right amount of grip off-road. Anyway, guys, that's about all I can go over for this video. Thank you for watching, and I'll see you in the next one. Bye, guys.